Hello, I'm going to be talking about attorney-client privilege in a second here, but before that, I am drinking today uh, The Abyss, which is an imperial stout from the brewery Deschutes, or Deschutes, not sure the correct way to pronounce it. Uh, it's a brewery from Oregon in the United States. Very good, very, very rich, very chocolatey. I really like it. Anyways, I'm gonna play my intro and then I'll talk to you about attorney-client privilege. Well, I'm sure you've probably heard this by now, but apparently earlier today, the FBI served a search warrant on attorney Michael Cohen's office. Michael Cohen is the attorney that represents Trump. And in particular, he's he represented Trump previously and in connection with the Mueller investigation. And the purpose of this search warrant was apparently to gather evidence of something that's already been known for years and was known prior to the election where Donald Trump became president. Basically, Trump's attorney, Michael Cohen, had purchased a story from the National Enquirer where the National Enquirer was going to publish this story about an affair that Trump had with a porn star named Stormy Daniels. The affair happened over a decade prior to the election. And because Michael Cohen purchased this story and never ended up getting published. But Stormy Daniels has been in the news every day for as long as I can remember. It's been months and months. So I would say that the story is pretty much out there at this point, even though Michael Cohen had apparently bought the story. So that's what the search warrant was for, it was to gather evidence to show that this payment that everyone agreed happened, in fact, happened. Obviously, amongst the things that are that were seized would include numerous privileged confidential communications between Michael Cohen, the attorney, and Donald Trump, the client, as well as many other potential clients that Michael Cohen represented. That's all in the hands of the FBI at this point. The FBI unit that conducted the search was approved by the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York. So it wasn't directly under Robert Mueller's command, but you can be certain that Robert Mueller was the impetus behind this search warrant. There's a couple of takeaways that I have from this that I want to share with you, reasons why I find what's gone on to be pretty disturbing. And the first takeaway that I'll discuss is the fact that attorney-client privilege is a centuries-old tradition in the United States. Attorney-client privilege has always been the law in the United States prior to us even being a country. It's something that we took from our English common law tradition. So in the county courts of England, somewhere 400, 500 years ago, they were observing the attorney-client privilege. The attorney-client privilege basically means that when a client consults with an attorney that anything they tell their attorney will, for one, be held confidential, and for two, cannot be used against them as evidence. The purpose of the attorney-client privilege is so that people could be honest with their attorneys and could get independent legal advice without jeopardizing their well-being. The purpose of the privilege is to promote open and honest communication between the client and the attorney. And it's been the law on the books for 
like I said, the entire length of time in our country. And it's actually an, an ethical responsibility that attorneys have to follow. Before you can become an attorney, you have to take an ethics test, which tests you on the attorney-client privilege, as well as many other things. There's an ethical rule on attorney-client privilege in every state. There's numerous case law precedent discussing the privilege. It's a very big deal. I can tell you that if I, as a prosecutor, try to do what Robert Mueller's investigation has done by going to an attorney's office and having law enforcement execute a search warrant there, I pretty much guarantee you that I would have a bar complaint the next day. My law license would be gone very fast if I tried to pull some crap like what's going on right now with the federal government. Attorney-client privilege is supposed to be a big deal. It should be a big deal. It's once again a centuries-old tradition of our legal system. And I've not seen really anyone criticize attorney-client privilege or make the argument that there should be less attorney-client privilege or that it should be abolished. I would say that not only is this tradition centuries old, but that it's it's pretty much popular and no one's, as far as I can tell, has really called on it to be abolished or changed whatsoever. It seems like there's widespread satisfaction amongst lawyers, amongst people in the general population, amongst judges, that attorney-client privilege is a good thing and that it's worth protecting the confidentiality of communications between a client and an attorney. Why is it so disturbing that attorney-client privilege was basically trampled on in this case? Well, there's a couple reasons. One is whenever a legal decision is made, it can become a precedent. So the fact that Michael Cohen's office has been searched now in this stupid Stormy Daniels Robert Mueller investigation means in any other investigation now, the lawyers can argue, I guess with the search warrant, it's usually going to be in a criminal law prosecutorial context. The prosecutor is going to be able to argue, well, hey, we were allowed to do this in Michael Cohen's office. So this situation is similar to the Stormy Daniels situation. Therefore, we should be able to search this defendant's lawyer's office and seize all the documents we can. Since you let us do it before, you have to let us do it this time. So that's kind of how a precedent can be established. And when it's dealing with something important like attorney-client privilege, allowing some really broad sweeping thing like this can really set a dangerous precedent. The second thing I take away from this, takeaway number two, there is no underlying crime that would justify such an extreme action violating the attorney-client privilege. The FBI is conducting an investigation. They want to seize this stuff as evidence to show that Michael Cohen made this payment to buy the rights to Stormy Daniel's story. What is the crime the FBI is investigating? Is it a crime to have an affair? That's not a crime. If Trump had an affair with Stormy Daniels, that's not a crime. Is it a crime for Michael Cohen to pay Stormy Daniels? for the rights to her story? No, that's not a crime. Is it bank fraud for Michael Cohen to write a check from his bank account to Stormy Daniels in order to purchase the rights to her story? No, that's not bank fraud. No one's being defrauded. Is it money laundering? No, it's just a transaction. Michael Cohen gets the rights to the story. Stormy Daniels gets money. There's nothing fraudulent about that. There's no source of concealment or anything about that. 
What about bribery? It's not bribery when there is no official pending legal proceeding. He's not bribing Stormy Daniels into doing something that she shouldn't do. She was going to sell the rights to her story to the Inquirer. Instead, he purchased them, and therefore the story didn't get published. That's not bribery. So what is the crime? What justifies them searching Trump's lawyer's office? What crime are they going to file against these people for this? They're not. There is no crime. None of this stuff is illegal. The affair happened so long ago that the statute of limitations would have passed even if there had been a crime. Yet they went ahead and violated the attorney-client privilege of the president's attorney. Our commander-in-chief, the most important person in the country on this flimsy of a basis. It's outrageous. Third takeaway is Robert Mueller in his investigation is utterly and completely corrupt. Robert Mueller's entire career has been nothing but corruption and bullshit. Let's start out with when he was special agent at the FBI. Have you seen the movie The Departed? Well, there is no Robert Mueller character in that movie, but you can bet the story that it's based off of heavily involves Robert Mueller. So the real life character that Jack Nicholson plays in that movie is a man named Whitey Bulger. Whitey Bulger was from South Boston and he comes from a a poor Irish neighborhood there. And his brother, William Bulger, grows up in the same neighborhood. Whitey Bulger becomes a violent criminal gang leader. He will later be implicated in 19 separate murders. William Bulger gets heavily involved in democratic politics in the state of Massachusetts, and he becomes president of the Massachusetts Senate. John Connolly is an FBI agent who also grows up in the same neighborhood as William Bulger and Whitey Bulger. John Connolly, as an FBI agent, ends up becoming Whitey Bulger's handler. And it's well documented that John Connolly is also heavily connected with William Bulger. And in fact, John Connolly gets a reputation in the FBI as someone who's politically connected and who can hook up FBI agents with jobs in the state of Massachusetts through William Bulger. The FBI ends up protecting Whitey Bulger as he kills numerous people and commits hundreds upon hundreds of felonies through his commission of rackets across Boston. And the FBI protects him, uses him as an informant, allows this all to continue. The way the feds work is a little bit different than how state prosecution works. State prosecutors and police generally function kind of independent of each other. They're not really working hand by hand, but it's different in the federal system. The U.S. attorney or the Department of Justice lawyers, the prosecutors, are pretty heavily involved in any investigations. So in order for John Connolly to protect Whitey Bulger, give him immunity, and protect him from prosecution, it has to get signed off by a prosecutor. And the prosecutor who signed off on it was Robert Mueller. For years, Whitey Bulger got away with these murders. He ended up going in the hiding And they interviewed William Bulger, former president of the Massachusetts Senate, about his location. And William Bulger basically refused to cooperate. He wouldn't tell authorities where his brother, Whitey Bulger, was hiding. They ended up catching Bulger anyway, and he was convicted of numerous murders. John Connolly, the FBI agent who was a handler for Whitey Bulger, also ended up getting convicted of several murders. 
In those cases, the federal government and later the state government of Florida were able to prove that John Connolly knew about and assisted Whitey Bulger in commission of some of these murders. Robert Mueller, nothing happened to him. They never implicated him, even though he was heavily involved in all of this, and even though his approval was required to help conceal what Whitey Bulger was doing. What happens later on in Robert Mueller's career? Well, he's still in the FBI during the Bush administration. He becomes head of the FBI. And once again, he gets involved in a bunch of political stuff and general shady shit. In fact, he is one of the people who repeatedly lied that there was strong evidence existing showing that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction. He was a key player in getting the United States to invade Iraq, even though Iraq did not have any weapons of mass destruction. Now look at his current investigation into Trump. It's filled with Democrats, people supporting a globalist agenda, people who are political partisans, who should not be involved in a heavily partisan political investigation. I would contend that basically nothing's changed from when Robert Mueller was a special agent in the FBI. He is still to this day involved in all sorts of political intrigue and very suspect corruption that completely undermines and taints his role in this investigation. His investigation is totally corrupt and should be ended immediately. Takeaway number four. Trump shouldn't put up with this shit. Donald Trump is the president. He's the head of the executive branch of government. He's the commander of chief. He's the head of the Department of Justice. Robert Mueller is a Department of Justice employee, as is Rod Rosenstein. These people should be fired. Donald Trump is the leader of the world's strongest country. He has things that are much more important at stake. Securing our border, dealing with North Korea, dealing with Syria. He shouldn't be putting up with this piddly bullshit. He shouldn't be subject to this investigation and seizure of records from his lawyer's office regarding some affair he had over a fucking decade ago. All of this is completely bullshit. Donald Trump shouldn't put up with it. He should fire these people. He should get on TV and say, I'm the president of the United States. This stuff is below me. This is a media witch hunt. And I'm just not going to participate with it anymore. What's going to happen to him if he does that? Is Congress going to commission some sort of like army to seize the presidency from Trump? I don't think so. Is the Republican House and Senate going to impeach Trump for firing some guy who is investigating a fucking affair that happened 10 years ago? I don't think so. Part of the reason that Trump was so popular is he appeared to be some sort of like strongman type guy who wouldn't put up with the bullshit. That's why people liked his sort of appeal and his outreach to Vladimir Putin. Some Americans wanted a president who was somewhat Putin-like, not to the extent that they declared there were no such thing as term limits anymore, and acted corruptly, but in terms of that they would have a president who was strong and who wasn't going to put up with the corruption and bullshit that fucking infects the other two branches of government, in particular the legislature. I wanted a president who would go to Congress and say, fuck you guys, and actually get something done. And the Robert Mueller investigation is the textbook example of the opposite of that. It's corruption, it's cronyism, it's overly legalistic bullshit, it's prosecutorial abuse, it's 
complete shit and it needs to end. So my takeaway is Trump should just fire all these people and then proceed to more important things. And if the news media doesn't like it, the legislature doesn't like it, oh well. The final takeaway I have, takeaway number five, is all of this is just a new and more extreme version of McCarthyism. Joseph McCarthy, during the Cold War, did these witch hunts where he would accuse people of being communist sympathizers. And he would publish lists saying, I have a list of this many number of communists who work in Hollywood, or I have a list of this number of people serving in the U.S. military who are secretly communist. And he would publish his list and use it to score political points, spread fear, and help promote his political brand at the time. And this is basically a restart of McCarthyism, but on steroids. You read these headlines where Mueller finds out some minor player involved in the Trump campaign had some sort of deal with Russia, and then it gets published in the newspaper. This guy had a deal with this Russian company, and there's zero evidence at all that anything corrupt happened or that that person was trying to rig the election or anything like that. But just the fact that this individual is connected to something Russian is held up there and used against that person and used to label them as this sort of anti-American election meddling traitor to the country. And that's what this Robert Mueller investigation is all about. It's a witch hunt. It's about finding very minor connections between different people in Russia and then throwing it out there and saying, look, there you go, Russia, this person, conclusion affirmed, they must have colluded with Russia. Our country passed sanctions recently on Russia for supposedly interfering in our election. Although I have seen no concrete evidence establishing that they did. There was the much-touted 19 Russians indictment that Robert Mueller obtained, which is complete bullshit. And I did a whole nother video on that, which if you're, you're interested, you can watch. And if you watch it, I guarantee you'll agree with me. That indictment is complete bullshit. And by the way, since that indictment has come out, not a single one of the defendants on it have been extradited from Russia to the United States or stood trial. Robert Mueller is too afraid to try and extradite those people because that indictment will fall like a fucking house of cards and he damn well knows it. So those have been all of the takeaways that I've gotten from this news story. Find it very disturbing that our centuries old tradition of attorney client privilege was so easily ignored and violated by this. I think Robert Mueller is corrupt. I think his investigation is a joke. But unfortunately, I am afraid that there is going to be some push by the deep state to either indict Trump or impeach him in order to install someone more favorable to the globalist establishment as president. I don't know if that'll happen. It might not, but it very well easily could. But if it does... It'll prove that the United States is no longer a democratic country. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe.